Hey, this is Nick Totoro, and you're listening to the Grown Up Italian Podcast. We are here with the one and only Nick Totoro. How are you, Nick? Thank you for coming in today. I'm good. I'm good I know you're man. running around going crazy. I'm a little tired because I'm like jet lag. And then when I go from west to east, I have a hard time sleeping. You know? Also, the Yankees, unfortunately. Yeah, well, the Yankees didn't help. Driving you a little crazy. Yeah, you know? that, you came here to watch them. I right? know, but that west to east killed me because like for three hours. And then sometimes you know, I go to bed, like say in LA, like one or two. So now I'm going to bed five, six five, in the yeah, morning. Yeah. Then I ain't got my wife's, you know, warm ass next to me. So I'm like, <laughs> I can't sleep without her. It's butt. more cold. It's more cold. Nah, well, nah, you know, I usually I give her a but massage. There's nothing I, better I than sleeping your own bed. That's what I do at night. I, I, I massage my wife and, you know, there it you makes go. me tired. She's sleeping. She don't even know. She's like, you were massaging? I go, yeah, for an hour. Well, she was dreaming about the massage. Yeah, she was dreaming. So you like to massage, huh? Yeah, I got into it. You know, I don't know. She used to massage when, when she was, you know, pursuing me. Now, you know. Now, like, the, the roles now I'm pursuing her. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. The a little roles, balance never hurt anybody. The roles reversed. <laughs> Maybe in a couple of years, they'll switch again. I don't know. I hope so. But menopause uh, had something to do with it. So I shouldn't really say that. She'll be mad. But that, I shouldn't. It's a rough thing for women. Yeah. Not a good word. Yeah. Well, you know, we have midlife crisis. Because she goes, you know, you had that. And I was like, yeah, I did have some of that. So I can't, you know. Women, it's tough being a woman. I mean, it's hard being a man, but imagine being a woman. Yeah, it's, it's harder. You know I, mean? I mean, imagine mm. giving birth. Yeah. The, 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 the debate stops there. Right. I, I, I mean... I hit my toe, I complain. That's why women are so fascinating. because They're so beautiful. And, and men, we're just like, you know, we're like animals. We're like, we're like we all like dogs in a way, you know, because we're like simple people, mm -hmm. you know. But women are very, they're very interesting, very... They are very fascinating. And an ugly guy could be good looking to women. Uh, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't, you know, if he has charisma, you know. If you, you can make a girl laugh, you can make a girl do you anything. Look at these comedians. Some of them, they're funny. They got hot women. They're not that good looking. Some of them it's are. You know? Look at me. I'm not that good looking. I get, you know. Are you a comedian? You can pull a couple. I, I'm a half a comedian. <laughs> not a full comedian, you know. Yeah, I know when I have a little microphone and a camera, I could say a joke or two. But <laughs> I could tell I stories. I mean, I could tell. I mean, sometimes I'm in a makeup trailer when I do my hair and I, I talk about my hair a lot and people go like die laughing because I have a very hard hair to cut. I don't have like white hair or black hair. I have something in between and hardly anybody can cut my hair. They all fuck it up. I have one kid. because of the curls too? Like yeah, it's because of the curls and the angles and people don't know how to listen. There's a kid in the valley out in the LA who could cut my hair. Hector. He's a goofy kid, but he's gifted. Kid smokes, he's weed, and he cuts my hair, he's stoned. It's fucking great, but he's amazing. And then I go to other people sometimes, like once in a while, and they have my son's like, don't do it, don't do it, you're not going to be happy. And he, they tell other people, don't cut his hair. Because I have to hold a mirror. I hold a fucking mirror because I have to see what they're yeah. doing. I feel like yeah. right now DD is watching us. Like I could cut his hair. Tom. Yeah, definitely. Nah, I don't know. Me, so uh, we, ha I have a barber. I mean, listen, I'm bald, but we go to the barber shop, and he was always telling me, "Is he good?" You gotta tell, you gotta tell Rock. We just went today this morning. Is he good? Me and then him back to back. I think he's he's pretty good. Like he takes the crab very yeah, but serious. That doesn't mean he can cut my hair. I mean, he does. Maybe. He's cut it's good with scissors. Well, I had a guy day. the other day. I'm doing this movie now, and, and the guy was good. He. He trimmed up this other guy that gave me a haircut before game. What was it? I was one of the games in the playoffs. I wanted to cut my hair, and I couldn't get my guy. So I got the guy in the neighborhood. I was like, "Yeah, it's all right. It's all right." And then I was like, "It's not fucking all right." He, he didn't. He didn't destroy me, but he didn't. He just what are the credentials to cut your hair good? I was just gonna ask that. Like, give give me the one, two, three. Like, you gotta uh, you gotta listen, right? And you gotta know how to give me a low fade. And then just blend the rest. And then you got to know how to line me up. But you got to understand this shape of my hair. You know, if you go too high, you're fucking destroyed right away. I've had, I've had hair because I've jumped out of chairs and 
You know, yeah. one time I was a young guy. So you take your hair very There was a place seriously. called Sal and Vin's when I was a young guy. The guy had scissors like, like fucking this big. He was cutting hair. I, I, that I, was I, scissor hands? I, I swear, there were big scissors. The hair was in my eyes. He not only cut all my hair off, it was crooked too. I jumped out of the chair and I said, stop. And he goes, no. He was like a greaseball guy. He goes, I fix, I fix. I said, no, you destroyed me. You destroyed oh, me. It was a paisan. Yeah, it was a paisan, but he didn't know. They give to... you a free care- haircut? You oh, saw no, I, I, I had to comb my hair. I was. The fuck is Wow. Us. Open a window. Just say wrong. I guarantee you that's an Amazon delivery. That's funny. I would We're that. in Brooklyn, guys. We're yeah, live in Brooklyn. It's your barber. He's, I think he yeah, he's like, he's barber. talking shit. <laughs> so I'll I was, show him. I was doing a movie at the time, and uh, I was a young Just tell him at the store. Yeah, just tell him, like, leave it at the store. So what was the movie? Oh, I was doing, it was a good movie called Federal Hill. I don't know if you guys ever saw it. It's a good independent about a bunch of Italian kids in uh, East Providence. It's an Italian neighborhood up there, Federal Hill. All Italians. And it's a very um, well-respected independent movie. I got nominated for a uh, Independent Spirit Award, which is like an Academy Award for independent, for independent movies. independent films, okay. Yeah, and I had all these fucking great reviews. And it got released. The guy, The guy... Made it like for eighty grand. This was, you know, right right when I got on NYPD Blue. So I was really skinny, starving for weight, and I and I did a, you know, me Anthony DeSando. It was a it was a good film in black and white. You guys would like it. It's the kind of movie like you guys would like. We gotta add that to the list along with uh, with yeah. Mac. Yeah, with, with Mac. Mac. Yeah, that's, that's one, one of my better people that saw it. They were like, oh, he's gonna be a movie star, but it wasn't like they didn't have that big distribution, right? And it could have like really helped my film career more because then I got on television so I became more of a TV star or TV you know what I mean Blue like, Bloods no no NYPD Blue oh, NYPD Blue yeah, I had just gotten on NYPD Blue uh-huh. so I was in Rhode Island at a dormitory shooting this thing and then I left there and then I went to do NYPD Blue and I was you know I left your, your range of acting is pretty crazy we talk yeah. about yeah being a cop I know lawyers and now like Brucey, like it's a, yeah. like yeah. the 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 range is, I mean, is crazy. Talents. Yeah, I, I mean, I have some range. I'm not. I'm definitely not a uh, a one note guy. I'm definitely yeah. not a guy that's typecast. What's kind of worked against me, and my brother has always said, was like, you know, he said, don't get fat because you're not a fat guy. You're not a big. I always wanted to be heavy. I always wanted to be like gain weight. I have this obsession. I've never heard of that in yeah, my life. Yeah, because I was starving for weight. I thought I was. I don't, I'm whacked. I thought I was like. Gonna die years ago. I don't know. I was always losing weight. I thought I wasn't gonna live long. I made it to fucking sixty. But anyway, uh, anyway, I you know my brother always said, "Listen, I told you you were more uh, you know attractive in the business when you were thin because you always look heavier on screen." So NYPD Blue, they thought I was a cute kid. They thought I was handsome. I was. I mean, I don't look bad. But the thing is, I should have stayed in better shape because when I go in for parts for versus guys like you or Dominic Lombardozzi. No, no disrespect. These guys are more like character type actors. Yeah, yeah. And they get these roles over me because I'm not a type. But I can do a lot of different things. They'll say, hey, Nick's really good. But that guy fits the role better. Sabino fits the role better. Mm-hmm. So Sabino gets the role. So I lose a lot of those kind of roles because I'm really not a type. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a, like you said, well-rounded guy. That can, I can do comedy. I think that's better, though. Do you do it is better, right, but yeah. I also haven't been taken advantage of by a lot, I, I've kind of been underused in a lot of ways. Yeah, that makes I've had sense. a good career, but trust me when I tell you I've been underused. Mm-hmm. On the car, on the car right here, we were having a great conversation where we were driving in downtown Brooklyn, and you said this is where Spike Lee's office was, and uh, you told me and my friend LePic that uh, he discovered you, and to be discovered by a legend by Spike Lee alone, I mean, how does that feel? You because you have so much family in the business too. Yeah. But to be discovered by, you know, sometimes when you have someone like a foot in the door, like a hookup, like you know a guy, is different than being discovered by right. someone who's a legend. Because even though my, my brother went to college, went to grad school at Yale, and I had done a little theater in high school and then some community theater, and everybody was like, this guy's a natural. He's a natural. I was in college. I told you I was running around in tights for a year, and I didn't know if it was for me. And I said, you know, then I got, had a kid. I, I was a doorman. So I got kind of like... I got sidetracked, you know, and everybody was like, this guy had a lot of talent. I'm like, what are you going to do? Be the rest of your life Central Park style with the hat on your head? So I was like, you know, I knew I had some dreams. I had I had aspirations of doing something creative. And then I saw my brother, you know, I was inspired by him. But he wasn't like, you know, just because I'm in the business, 
you're gonna be in the bed. Exactly. But he was like, it's not but too, it's he, not too late for he you. He was he was pushing you to do it because he, he saw me. something in you. Yeah, he he said, you know, you could do a lot more. It pains me to see you here with that hat on, even though I was very popular on Central Park South. And doormans make good money. They loved me. Like I had, you know, all kinds of people. Billy Joel lived there. He loved me. Like, That's you amazing. know, he was like, Nick, you know, his first date with Christy Brinkley. He's like, you know who I'm going out with? I go, no. He goes, Christy Brinkley. Can you believe that? I go, yeah, but you're Billy Joel. <laughs> the fuck? Were they good tippers? Billy was kind of cheap at the end. <laughs> Yo, no, the people his... with money are always oh, the cheapest. Cheap That's why they have it. That's they're the cheapest. I, I, watched all, I used to watch Gangsta's Cars because they'd show up. Yeah. One time we watched Gotti's car. I didn't really talk to John, but he came and it was like, I was blown away. I was like, well, I met all these movie stars. I saw Gotti. I was like, holy shit, my was, mouth was... He cool. was a star, though. He was a star. He was a fucking star. Isn't that, isn't that crazy, though? If you think I met Joe it. Montana one time. That's... Montana. 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 No, Montana. He's the guy from Chicago. Good actor. Oh, oh. Not, not, not the Jets quarterback. No, not Joe Montana. Joe Montana. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm talking about uh, the, the 49ers. 90s, 90s, yeah, 90s. you're talking That's about Joe, Joe Montana. Montana. Yeah. So Joe Montana was passing me. I used to know, recognize everybody. I, I would walk with people. I'd leave my hotel. And i just like, I was a very personable dorm man. Yeah. You know? So I was like, hey, Joe Montana. I said, you know, my brother's an actor. I used to tell people. And they're like, who's your brother? He was up and coming. I said, oh, John Turturro. Said, oh, he's terrific. It's nice to meet you. He was like, he's bodies like me and all this stuff. I'm half bodies. And so then, when I first got my NYPD Blue, Dennis Franz, a Chicago guy. I didn't really know who Dennis was. He was a big TV guy from Hill Street Blues. And I didn't know. So Dennis went there and said, hey, Nicky, with a Chicago accent, can I ask you a question? I go, yeah, what's up, Dennis? He goes, were you ever a doorman? I said, yeah. He goes, because my friend Joe Montana swears you stopped him on the street. He must have said, there's a kid on the show. I know that kid. He was a doorman. I'm like, yeah. I was. I was never embarrassed by it. No. It's like fucking what I did. It's part of my life. It's part of my story. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was never a doorman. I was just. I just. I was the door. You know, I'm like, there was a guy who used to bust my balls. Just the manager, Pomerantz. He'd go. He said, he'd see me all over the street. So he's like, he wanted me to just stand like a statue. He's like, what is the definition of a doorman? I said, well, you know, I open the door. He goes, well, where should a doorman stand? Where should he stand? He said, doorman can stand here. Can stand there. Can stand anywhere. Well, there's a door. I say, what are you saying, Pomerantz? What are you saying? You, you think I'm an actual door? I go, no, I'm not an actual door. I'm a fucking doorman. I used to give it to this guy, Pomerantz. I wrote a pilot about my doormans that we almost sold it. Well, I don't even want to go into that, but we had two development deals. Me, me and my brother. And my brother wanted to, whatever. It just didn't work out at HBO. It's a shame. Then I shot a pilot on my own that I directed. Shot right in front of the St. Moritz. And now it's a Ritz Carlton. It was on Central Park South. Uh -huh. So I was like known on that block. And then when I got in the movies, I'd go back to my, my job, you know? One time, Matt Dillon stopped me. He saw me in Jungle Fever. He was like, oh shit. I go, how you doing, Matt? I'm, I'm in my yard. He goes, fucking good actor, man. What are you doing here? I go, it's where I work. He goes, yeah, but you're really good. I go, I know, but this is my day job. So uh, I remember meeting him on a plane. He goes, man, I always respected that about you. You know, I... I saw you in the movies, then I saw you in front of the hotel. So I didn't quit my job like right away. I, I, I was working like three years or so on the side while I was being a doorman. And people were like, yeah, you're doing good, doing good. And I was thinking, maybe I could make a living at this. It was never my goal to be like rich and, you know, I just wanted to be successful. If I could make a living, I said, then I'll, I'll quit this job and, and I'll, I'll become an actor full time. And, and that's what eventually happened because, you know, one of my agents goes, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna make it. You think so? And he goes, I'm telling you, you're going to make it. He goes, you, this job, you got to get rid of it. you got to get rid of a lot of things. I had a lot of obstacles in my way, but somehow... What made you want to move to L.A.? Because you're such a New York guy. When show, I think of New Yorkers in L.A., you're the first guy that comes No, to I mind. never saw my life going there. I, I never saw ever leaving Rosedale, Queens. Or I was, It was a shock. Uh, it was that show. I got on the show. I got hired. I almost didn't get an audition. I'll tell you, that's another funny story. I almost didn't get an audition for NYP Blue. The woman did not want to see me. I'm only going to see Hispanic actors. Difference, man. I'm fucking ethnic. I, I pass for everything under the under the sun. Yeah. People don't even know I'm Italian. They think I'm fucking, I'm Puerto Rican. They think I'm fucking Middle Eastern. They think whatever. It's because I'm, I, you know, who knows? I, I, I got other shit in me anyway. But I mean, the difference is I almost didn't get the job that my agent at the time went over to casting ladies head in, in New York and went to the LA kit. And then all the producers came to New York. He goes, I got you in, baby. You get an audition. I was like, all right, great. But I, w I didn't even know it was going to be a big show, which was good at the time. I didn't know. I was I was actually working that day. It was in the Gulf and Western building. 
and I had a fucking sweater on over my doorman pants. And I read for Stephen Bochco, all these guys, David Mel they were all there. And I had like a few lines. I was like, hands up! You know, I was like, I'm up for that. And they were like, they were all looking at me like, ooh. And I remember my fucking <laughs> agent goes, they Told love, him. he goes, they love you, they love you, but they want to know like, do you have any like, Hispanic blood? Who is your agent? He sounds a little like uh, this guy he sounds like somebody I know, former no, president a, or yeah, something. Is he from? Guy. Is he from Williamsburg, no, Maryland? No, 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 no. He's an LA guy. He's, he's, a, he's a huge Yankee, but we're still friends. He's not my agent, but we're still buddies. That's good. So I used to do him on David Letterman and shit, because then Letterman started having me on. I wasn't even like top guy in the show, but my agent got me on the Letterman show, and then I I killed on it. And people were like, "Oh fuck, he's funny." Because on the drama, I played like a I played like a virgin. I was like a Boy Scout cop who became a detective and I was like a very it worked in that car. I was very young I was very thin mm -hmm. I stayed thin but I had a better career uh, <laughs> anyway um, so you know I mean it was just amazing you're getting back to Spike I was an extra one night on Do the Right Thing I went down and watched my brother film I said wow I was blown away I was toying with the acting I was taking some classes at Carnegie Hall he goes well I could have maybe got you a part I go well, I'll just be an extra so I went down one night I was supposed to go back, but I had to go to work. And Spike liked me. I was like, what, I was just a fucking extra. And he was like, burning the pizzeria. Then, coincidentally, he calls me that fall, a few months later, got my number from my brother. Said, this is Spike. I said, Spike who? He goes, Spike Lee. I said, wow, Spike Lee. What's up, man? I was acting like, why is this fucking guy calling me, you know? <laughs> He's like, man, would you like to loop or do the right thing? And I, I didn't know what looping was, but I just said, yeah, I'll loop. And then, you, and then you Googled it after? No, no, no I didn't before Google. Google. No Google. I didn't know what it was. He just said, come on down tomorrow, we're going to do some looping. What, what does that mean? So you're looking at the screen, right? There's a scene, there's a riot scene, this and that. He wants you to fucking react as one of the people in the crowd. He wants you to react, so he had me screaming a, a lot of bad racial obscenities. And he was floored by three hours or whatever it was, two, three hours of screaming all kinds of racial obscenities that you know wound up in the movie. And then from that, he wrote me a role in a movie called Mo' Better Blues. So from being an extra to doing, uh, Spike calling me out of the blue kind of changed everything. That's amazing. Because it, 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 to me, it was like a sign. And then when I got the part in Mo' Better, I said, well, here's an opportunity. Let me see if I could, let me see if I can hang, you know? And I did. I held my own with my brother. I was in a scene with fucking Denzel. I'm like, fuck, this guy's great. My brother goes, oh, yeah, he's like a fucking, he's a heavyweight. Mm, yeah. And I just, you know, I was just, I, w I was just working hard, you know, and we, me and my brother were improvising, we played these two Jewish guys that were fast talking, like hustlers, we mm -hmm. owned a jazz club. It was a great experience. Then when I bat went back to work, my brother goes, don't forget what happened here. Don't forget the experience, and I knew what he meant, because I was like, wow, that's it. You know what? That anything could happen? No, that maybe I could do this. You know what I mean? And then Spike goes, I got another movie coming. You're going to play a bigger part this time. You're going to play like based on this guy, Joey Farmer, crazy kid from Jungle Fever. So I prepared, I prepared, and I fucking, you know, I was so focused. That was like my coming out party. I had the Sergio Tacchini suit on. I was, I was, uh, I was really like, and I think that movie gave me a lot of confidence. I, got, I felt like, all right, you know what? There's no turning back. I'm doing this. I know I still had my job, but I said I'm gonna fucking do this. I think your talent's undoubtable. So like I, it's, it's I, you. You, know, you have to. You're you're, you're a great actor. You're super recognizable. Everybody in New York, everybody knows who you Thank are. You. And even how did the Adam Sandler like uh, cameos come? Because that's what I'm curious about. That came later because see NYPD Blue, it was a drama. It was a great drama. I had I had a wonderful character, but they never like let me. They never even let me, like, everything I did was, like, I was the straight man. The guy I worked with, they gave him all the funny lines because he used to stutter. But then they saw me on these talk shows, and everybody said outside NYPD, they said, Nick is funny. And even my agent goes, man, you could be, like, a comic star, too. Mm -hmm. You have comedy chops in you. I always knew I kind of had that in me. Not to be a comic, because people go, why aren't you a stand-up? I go, well, I never developed that talent. I'm not saying I couldn't have been a stand-up. I probably could have if I came up with an act. Yeah, it so requires maybe, like a lot of writing, yeah, right? Well, you know, I'm a storyteller, but I never, you have to work at that. I'm not saying I couldn't have, but I never work. I tell stories and the makeup, people laugh. And I did on Letterman, and Letterman loved me, and he's tough. 
If you ain't funny, Letterman will destroy you. I went in on the Letterman show and I went in hard. I was I used to shadow box. I used to go nuts. Then he had me back several times. <laughs> I had some great Letterman. In fact, one time my brother got annoyed. He was I had my brother on. He kept talking about me. He was like, "Your brother was here. Your brother." <laughs> my brother was getting annoyed. He's like, well, maybe he should be on your show. And let him <laughs> maybe go. call my brother. Yeah. I, and sometimes my brother, you know, very supportive. But like, you know, when I first had some success, it was a little jarring. Because I think it, my brother was like, you know, he, he maybe felt like it was, you know. So from, so from being on Letterman, you got an audition for... Uh... No, so I'm saying the Letterman like surfaced like comedy stuff. Because oh. I had done some plays. I had done, I had done comedic stuff, but I was on a great, great drama. So when, no one knew that I could be a comedic actor too. Mm-hmm. Not really. They had not seen like, I did this one eye Jimmy movie that I produced with all these guys. And no one saw it. It was underground. It was fucking hilarious. I played this guy, Junior Junior. And everybody was in the movie. Like all these stars. Uh, we shot it with our own money. 80 grand in Red Hook. It's like, underground. You guys should watch it. One eye Jimmy. You'll fucking die laughing. Everybody's in it. Sam Jackson, Steve Buscemi. My brother plays oh, wow. Disco Bean. You guys will fucking die laughing. It's a low, it was like a movie ahead of its, it was called The Search for one Eye Jimmy. We're looking for this guy that's missing with one eye. And uh, one guy shows up and goes, I'm one arm Jimmy. And they're like, no, 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 one eye Jimmy, one eye Jimmy. <laughs> Fucking funny movie. So it's so like, it's, uh, like a you can get neighborhood movie. You can get a neighborhood movie. Yeah. And we shot it, we were doing these plays, Conversations with the Mob, three funny one acts. It was me, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and my good friend Holt McCallan. He was, had a lot of success. Big, big, strong guy. And, uh, doing these plays in the bottom of a restaurant in the village. And they were funny plays. We all did two plays each. Boom, boom, you know, the ex-champion, he wanted to act. And uh, he stayed at my hotel when I was a doorman. Fucking weird. He saw me in a movie, he goes, I think I know that kid from somewhere. I'm like, yeah, I was your doorman. And uh, so... Crazy about, ha- crazy the circles, yeah. though. All the circles closed. So I saw this movie when I... Uh, Laws of Gravity. The guy shot it in seven days. It was a good movie. You know, it was all guns and shit, and it was a good movie, a lot of good actors in it. So I read the guy shot it for 40000 in seven days. So we're doing a, the, I didn't know, but I was ambitious. I said, hey, guys, we got this script. When I, Jimmy, we were doing these plays. I said, we could shoot this movie. I got one of Spike's, like, producers, low to help me. And we, we got 80 grand together. I put 10, my own money. We all put our own money in. We fucking went to Red Hook. I was fearless, and we fucking we shot them. Like, that gave me confidence, like, you know. And we pulled it off. I, I was talking out of my ass. I didn't know if you could do it for fucking 40,000, uh, 80,000. But I figured, well, that guy did it in seven days for 40 grand. Let's get a producer. Let's get people. And, and Ray was like, I'll put in 40 grand. Holt says, I'll put 10. I'll put this other guy, Sam Cass, who was a was kind of a thief, this guy, the writer. He was my friend. But you know, he wrote shit about me and about my life behind my back. I caught him. He ruined our whole relationship. Anyways, I can take shots at him now. I don't give a shit. Fuck you. Fuck you, Sam Cass. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> you yeah, I was your fucking biggest supporter. You went some so mellow to fuck. Listen, <laughs> the Grown Up Italian podcast no, is for wrote, taking the a shot. I wrote a pilot at Fox called The King of New York based on my doorman shit. And with Artie Lang. And it never went anywhere. I would have sued him if it got picked up. And everybody was like, Nick, where's Nick? He's like, yo, don't stab your friends no, back. No, don't do that. Because it's there's never going to work. There's a lot of people like that. There's, it's always your own there's, there's people, a, though. There's a very famous guy out there. I won't say his name. That he, like, cut everybody out. I won't say his name. We got you all jerked up now. Yeah. So where was I? I got lost. I'm having a great time, yeah. guys. So <laughs> when I Jimmy, blah, 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 comedy, this, that. So when I got off NYPD Blue, mm-hmm. fast forward, they kind of... It's a long story. I went to do Sammy the Bull. I went back. They held it against me. They kind of wrote me out of NYP. It was, it was only like because it was conflicting with your role. No, they let the me show? do it. Then I came back and they treated me completely different. At the it was like shoulder. fucking weird. I was in the fifth year. De Niro offered me this role. I'm like, how do you say no? Yeah. I said, could I do it? You guys could let me out. You don't have to pay me. And then I'll come back. I came back and it was like, you, you know, like they let me do it and then they held it against me. And then like two years later, I got like. And I was just starting to make some real money. And then, boom, I was on the street. But then I bounced back. My agent goes, don't worry, baby. Don't worry. Don't worry, honey. You know, and like, this is the same guy or yeah, different same guy? Because okay. you did have a little different now. Yeah, well, I, I thought I, it was Elvis for so, a second. A <laughs> couple years later. A couple years later. <laughs> so, so I fucking, uh, we, go to, we go to WB. I okay. never pitched before. I didn't even fucking. I go in there with those. I go, a, a new network. 
And they were a bunch of women, mostly. And they loved me. I said, I want to do like a fucking modern day honeymoon. I was talking out of my ass. And they were like, great. They gave me a deal, development deal, which means you got to go get a writer and you come up. Do a pilot? Yeah, you get a writer. You come up with a story. The writer will will work with you. He'll develop the story and then they'll shoot a pilot. And if they like the pilot, it becomes a series. The pilot came out fantastic. Didn't have a great title. It was like the Nick or something. I don't know. But... Uh, this guy, Dave Flabot, I found this great writer, and I gave him the story, and he nailed it. Like, Billy Gardell was in it, a guy that wound up having his own fucking series. A few other people, not too many big stars, but it was a really good pilot. It should have got picked up. And then in the end, we got nixed over some girl with big tits or something. And I was like, I, I don't know what they did. We, we, like, they were putting laugh track. The audience was laughing. Because they were looking at the how you doing. Forget how you're doing. I mean, I said, you had pe- real people fucking laughing at these two landlords, these two Italian guys I developed the role for. They were hysterical. I'm like, why would you want to take away, like, real laughter and put, ha fake laughter? <laughs> no, I'm like, this, they said it's one of the best pies they did. Then all of a sudden, they overanalyzed it, and we didn't get picked up. So I went from being on a show where I could have my own comedic show, and it was really good. People were like, Nick, I saw your pilot. It was special. CBS saw it. And then they offered me a deal. And then I said, well, why don't you want to pick up this show? Because it had Brad Gray producing. Because I knew the show was fucking good. And, you know, I can't argue with the guy, Les Moonves. Ah, baby, I saw what you did. Do another one. I said, yeah, but I, this show is fucking good. I got the right. So I had to start all over. Then I wrote a, and then I had to find a new writer, this guy, Vic Levin. We became good friends. And then I wrote a pilot with the guy. The guy goes, write it with me. I go, I'm not a writer. He goes, yes, you are. You don't know. He goes, but you, you're really a writer. Because, you, you know, I, I, I goes, there's no way I can get your voice. Like, Dave, Dave could nail my voice. You can't, you can't fake the accent. No, but I learned how to write with him. And they picked up the pilot to shoot it. They don't always automatically pick it up. They liked it. As actually, a friend of mine, Sal Stabile, was writing My Cousin Vinny as a pilot. It, the pilot just, like, wasn't that, he's a good writer. And, but they didn't like it. They never shot My Cousin Vinny. It was supposed to be, like, a TV show? Yeah. So they were, they were developing My Cousin Vinny. With me in mind, and I had a I had a development deal with this guy Vic, and um, they liked our pilot, but then they made us change the ending. It was funny. I was trying to sneak into a Yankee game because I used to do this. Mm-hmm. I used to sneak in without tickets. I had a I had a fucking whole way, and then I I, I know my whole thing was I got like to the near the dugout and I was screaming at Al Lighter. I was like, "It's ghoulie time! It's ghoulie time!" And he went crazy, lost his mind on the mound. He jumps in the stands. It's fucking funny. And they go like, well, how, how are they going to shoot that? He goes, if they change the ending, I'll pick up the pilot. Oh, what the fuck? Why are you going to change it? I said, you know, he goes, we got to change the ending. Otherwise, they're not shooting the pilot. So I wound up being in Yankee jail. It wasn't bad. It, they watered it down. Michael Rappaport, my friend, played the cop. They watered it down. Then, they, then you know, the show was really, at the beginning, edgy, edgy. And then they were like, is he going to be likable? And then they got to smile. You gotta, and they made me smile. And I was like... And it got watered down. And then they said, when they saw the show, they said, this is a bad word. If anybody ever says, you're cute. Even if a chick says you're cute. I'd rather say, you're ugly or you're hot. Then cute? Cute's bad. It's a bad word. Is that what I've been doing wrong this whole time? Cute is bad. No, you know Because no, right. it's just a bad word. When I heard, they said it's cute. I said, we're done. Yeah, cute's not good. We're done. I got pneumonia from the stress because I was writing, acting, and I put so much stress on me. I was like walking around, I had a pain in my chest, and the guy goes, "I hate to tell you this, Nick, you have pneumonia." When, when someone's like trying to downplay you, they're like, so, ah, "That's cute." You know, I had these yeah. comedy shots that nobody ever saw. You know, so then fast forward a couple of years later, my brother had done a movie with Sandler. It wasn't even a big Sandler. Zoh- Zohan one? No, he had done Mr. Deeds. He's oh, great Mr. Deeds. Uh, yeah, he's great yeah. in it. That was first. That was first. My brother's hysterical. So I had saw a poster in a movie theater. It goes, "Coming soon." You'll never see this. Where they have a poster for a movie with a guy in handcuffs that said Burt Reynolds, Adam Sandler, Chris Rock. And I heard Adam was a great guy. My brother said, Adam's great. Everybody, I knew a friend, Frankie Gezadich, that worked with him. Frankie Gezadich? You know Frankie Severo, the guy. Uh, oh, uh, you know, hey, <laughs> that's his uncle. Come on in. I call him. That's the guy fucking, uh, the guy that put in the meat freezer. Yeah. He's my friend. Yeah. He was my friend. He used to make sauce. The minute the sauce went in, it went right out. He put Man. so much meat in it, it was greasy. Literally, I ate the fucking sauce. Yeah, you might get in As trouble I'm for saying it, this. It doesn't matter. I don't know where he is now. <laughs> As I was eating it, it was coming out. 
That's how good, I mean, it's fantastic. But my stomach was, I have all kinds of stomach issues. So. <laughs> Yo, Nick's never heard movie. of that before. Your movie. So, I see that poster and I go, I gotta get an audition. I remembered the original movie. I didn't know there was a, I didn't know the movie that well. Well, Brucey, the character is based on this guy. He's not called Brucey, but he's doing push-ups. He's like football. I don't want to say the word. Uh, it's not. It's an offensive word. Anyway, uh, the guy Bruce, he's, he's based, based on this like little wild. He's always doing push-ups, and but they didn't call him Brucey in the original. He puts like sand and and uh, Paul Crew and Burt Reynolds was the original Paul Crew. And when yes, Burt, yes, like, yes. It's a good movie. If you've ever seen the, the beginning of that fucking movie, it's not like an Adam movie where it's com- comedic. Bird has a girl against the wall by the throat. She's like, whore! Whore! He goes, he goes, I'm taking your, I'm taking your Ferrari. He goes, I earned it. She's like a hot 70s chick. She goes, whore! He goes, get out of my way, Bird. She's got like 70s fucking clothes on, like a porn star. <laughs> he takes her by the fucking throat. Wham! Against the 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 it's like, wow, this is fucking great. But people love all movies because it's comedic. Anyway, I got an audition for the movie. Uh-huh. I think my brother put a good word. He goes, Adam goes, he goes if you like him, he goes, he could be really funny. Uh-huh. There's a little part at the beginning. It wasn't that big. It was like small. Sandler, after the first scene, loved me. He said, uh, dude, you're funny. You, you're killing. You're going to kill in this. He kept adding, adding words, adding yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It became like this iconic role. Yeah, because Brucey is like very you, big in the longest show. I can get mm-hmm. the fucking rights to that character. Paramount Plus, whatever. We make a goofy movie called. It has to be called Brucey. Can't be called Timmy or Ronnie. Because I have so many fucking fans. It's 17, 18 years ago. They think they, they don't. They don't even say Nick. Hey, Brucey, what's up? Mm-hmm. The fuck is this? Brucey even on shit? TikTok, I see you sometimes I know. in Jersey. So I'm telling you, it's a good spinoff movie out there. We'll see. Maybe one day I'll be able to achieve it. Now, but that comically showed the world that oh, this fucking guy could be funny. Then Adam put me in another. And then people, I, now, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Because you know, people stop me. You lot. play Bruce. You pretty much play Brucey in in that too. No, it's like the same persona. It's not almost. Brucey. It, it, it's 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 a um, it's a different guy. Yeah, a little. Yeah, di- but it's a different. But guy. very similar in like the energy level. I feel not quite, not no. quite. It is different. Oh, because that Bruce, character Bruce is like really locked in, and I was locked in in that movie. There were some movies where you just know. What's the biggest difference between Brucey and the fireman? That because what was the fireman's name? Fucking Brucey's just he's just really fucking out there. You know what I mean? He's really like on the edge. You know. The other guy was like he was, you know, he was he was a, a different version. It just he was not as like um, he was not as uh, manic. That guy, the guy Tony or whatever. Yeah, because he's like, because I'm Italian. Yeah, I'm and Italian. He goes, I'm Italian. He goes, oh, what's wrong with me? You know, he goes, he goes you know, I watch my unibrows, whatever. <laughs> you know, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, you're just not my type. He goes, you're a ten, but you're not my type. But I came up with that dance. Everybody loved that. Wait, that's I'm a ten. Yeah, I'm a. Those I'm a ten. Yeah, he goes, no, go, no, I'm a ten. He goes, you're it a sounds 10. like I'm a ten. No, he goes, you're a ten. You're a ten. He goes, I'm a ten. Anyway, so that's that's really really the comedy. People saw me that you know because now like some people see me, they'll go, "Aren't you a comic?" And I go, "No, uh, you got me confused." I get confused. Like people think I'm a comic. They think I'm John Leguizamo. I'm like, I'm not any of those guys. That's Sometimes, funny. Some people go, "Hey, John." I go, "I'm not fucking John." He's like six foot one. What the fuck is wrong with you people? You're not that it's, guy, pal. Not that it's guy. Funny. Anyway. We didn't talk about the Yankees. <laughs> yeah. Right? But before, before we get into that, the persona, like... You're Sorry guy, if I'm going off. No, no, no. This is perfect. So now you're on TikTok. Yeah. How? My son put me on TikTok. Uh, okay. I was washing a car one day with White Claw and Gabe before he was White Claw. And I didn't know. I know nothing about fucking TikTok. But White Claw Gabe was already on. No. So he wasn't he on was, TikTok yet? He, I don't think he... I don't even think I... I wasn't on. My son filmed it I was just washing a car. He thought it was, I have a power washer. So he, he thought it was fucking funny or whatever. He was filming it. I didn't even know he was filming. I was like, hey, Gabe, move over here. Go over there. You could look back and see this early fucking, and it, it went like, I don't know, a million hits, two million. He goes, hey, dad, I put that thing on TikTok. And see, on Twitter, I have a small audience. It's kind of moronic. In Mostly a way. Yankee fans. Like, yeah, they, they don't even know I'm an actor or I'm a famous or anything successful, whatever. They know me as he's a baseball fan. It's fucking absurd. See, on TikTok, they connected my face to who I am and yes, what I do exactly, for life. Exactly. exactly. I have some people that go, "Hey, there's the Yankee guy. Yankee guy. I've been a fucking Yankee fan forever. 
don't want to be known as the Yankee guy. I don't even <laughs> fucking work for the Yankees. Yeah, but they right. should hire me. But commission. that's another story. <laughs> but I gotta be honest. When I <laughs> so you put that video on. That's how I got. That's how I got famous on TikTok. Yeah. Then Gabe was screaming and all this shit one day, and Nick said, you know, you know, what you, a should, duo. you should keep, you should keep yelling. You should change your name and all this stuff. And my son is kind of the genius behind. Uh, a lot of this shit, he really understands how it works, and yeah. he comes up with these funny, funny fucking skits that some of them are really hysterically funny and stupid too, but they're funny. <laughs> I said, you know, it's like dumb and dumber, but it's like you know, it's good comedy. It's better than a lot of shit that I see. Yeah, yeah, I think sure. it's funny, and I, I did see your. Son. He's naturally yeah, funny. He's, he, Gabe, Gabe is hilarious, and this the character White Claw is an absurd version. Yeah. Gabe himself is funny. He doesn't. He's just nakedly funny. Yeah. And then now that white claw guy is, you know, and kids are obsessed with him. They love him. Fuck Barry Yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a great character. Express myself. I just want to express myself. <laughs> I could. I could really do him. I could actually play. Is he him. like but that? Listen. Yeah, yeah. You are the Yankee guy. When I when something happens with the Yankees, I go to see what you post, like to react to it. Well, because you know what, the real fans know I'm a man of the people. They know that. There's some people like, is he putting it on? Is he like, is he being like a fucking theatrical? And I'm like, no, he's not. He, I, he was, I've been doing this since I'm a kid. I've been obsessed. I wouldn't come out of the house. I was depressed. My parents were like, even my wife goes, it's like kind of pissed upon marriage somewhat. You know, just, you're just too much with it. It's like an obsession for me. I, I really, I take it to heart, but I, you know, but I'm also knowledgeable. I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm talking. Like I told you, I could see things happening in my head. Like, I almost have, like, a mental telepathy or something. Before I can, it even happens? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the other night, I told this guy, big Irish guy, when the guy threw the ball away, you know, when Glaber fucking threw it, and the other yeah. guy was, they both fucked up. And then I said, it's over. Yeah. This big Irish guy was like, hey, I said, I said, are you listening to me? I said, it's fucking over. It's done. And what happened? Base hit, base hit. We lost. Yeah. I knew it. You, you see a sign, you see something, you go, holy shit. It's done. Yep. I can see it happen. They go, why are you being pessimistic? I go, but there was a guy being pessimistic in front Lasagna of me. Lasagna was pitching lights out oh, yeah. too. This guy kept telling me, Donaldson's going to strike out. I said, would you please stop? I know he's going to strike out. I don't need more fucking Moloiki from you, from this other guy. Some of these fans are like, you know, they think I'm, you know, they, I'm like, I already know what's going to happen. I know he's going to strike out, but please, I'm trying to stay positive. Yeah. And I am kind of negative. Then I got a guy who's more negative than me. You know, and I'm at, I got Houston fans there. They're having fun with me. I have fun with their fan base. Some of them are douchey, but most of them are fun. You know, I, you know fan bases are like... All right, Nick, let's play a little game. Yeah, go ahead. You're the owner of the New York Yankees. Right now? Right now. Right now. This offseason. Yeah. Right now. Step one, what are you doing? Step one, I'm not bringing Cashman or Boone back. I mean, it's time for Both a new... Both of them out? Gone. Got to get a new GM. Uh, you need. Do you a have a, a GM do you, that you like? No, but you need you need fresh blood. There's a guy Brian Sabian out there. I don't know. He was good with the Giants. He won three out of five years. You need somebody that knows how to build a good team. They have built a very flawed baseball team from 2017 when they were like a great story. They were young, the baby bombers. They've yes, gone yes. downhill. Yeah. They have not gotten better. They've gotten worse. Resign Aaron Judge. You have to. He's the face of the team. It's how much? How much are you paying him? I'll pay him. I'll pay him like you know uh, the highest paid player. Maybe I give him forty million a year, for seven, eight years, the max. You know, what I mean. And if he doesn't want to be a Yankee, and and they don't make him that offer, they're ridiculous. And if they make him that offer, and he doesn't want to, then I say, all right, then you didn't want to be a Yankee. You know what I mean? I mean, it's for him, for his legacy, and for his career, it'd be stupid to go somewhere else. It'd be really moronic. But how old is he now? Thirty one. He's 30, 30 31, 31, but he's the yeah. face of the team. He yeah. just hit 62 home runs. He carried them. Listen, I think he was burnt in his playoffs. This I is did, this is coming from burnt. a Mets fan. There's nothing like winning being a Yankee. No. There's a legacy that Remember, comes the with Mets that. are still the Mets. They're always going to be the Mets. No offense. But the Yankees are the Yankees, and we need to get back to being that. But we're still the Yankees. But we have these corporate kind of bloodless people running it. They don't have like a soul. Steinbrenner, even though he big old Steinbrenner, George. The, the, the dad was insane, but he was like me. He was a fan. He wanted to win. He wanted to win. He was like a fan. And I don't think his son need. has that, though. No, he's a businessman. Yeah. He's probably a nice guy, but he's a businessman. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I never heard the son say anything. George would like when yeah. back he's in the very, day when Yankees would lose. Listen, he's very corporate. I think it's all about numbers with these people. Yeah, for sure. I really think it is like that new stadium. Even that new stadium, it's comfortable, it's nice, but you don't have that. It doesn't have that edge. It's it doesn't have that soul. It is a very nice stadium, but there's just it's not like the old ballpark. I mm. saw so many great games there. I mean, from '76 on, Chris Jambliss had a home run. I jumped on the field as a kid. 1976, the Yankees won the pennant. I ripped out grass. I was running with grass in my hand, planted in my backyard. I mean, I go way back. And That's I, was great. Like, I was there when Reggie hit three homers in 77. I was there through the whole 96 through 2001. I was there at the clincher in 96. They brought me on the field. We were shooting NYPD Blue that week, exteriors. And they brought me on the fucking field. I had all the juice going on in my life at that time. Those were the time mm-hmm. of my life, 96. Got married. The Yankees on the hit show. The Yankees won the World Series. I came back from 0-2. Won four mm-hmm. in a row. I wound up in the fucking... Doug, I wound up in the... They brought me in the locker room. I was, it was surreal. Let, they, let's, they, let's go over some more players that we're going to keep to build that team sure, you're talking about. Sure, I would bring So back, you said Judge we're keeping. Yeah, we're keeping Judge. We're, about, bringing, we're bringing back Rizzo. Okay. He, he opted out, but he probably wants a two, three-year deal. The guy is built for Yankee Stadium. He's a winner. He's clutch. He's a lefty. They got to get more lefty-driven. They're never going to win. I just told you later that they always won with lefties. In the 70s, you had Reggie, you had Nettles, you had Chambliss, you had Rivers. They've been a fucking righty-hitting team. In the 90s, it was it was, it was, was Bernie, a uh, switch hitter, uh, uh, Posada, O'Neal, Tino. They got to get back to that. They went, When they started getting left-handed hitters this year, they were doing great. When they had Carpenter, the mustache, he got hurt. And then the other guy, the fucking kid, Benintendi. They look like a different team. Speaking of Ben Attendee, do you want to keep him? I would bring him back. I would consider bringing him back for a couple of years. As long as it's, you know, not ridiculous. Because he's a little bit soft, that kid. I think he's, he got hurt swinging the fucking... He swings. You ever see the way he swings? He lets go of the bat? Like, what the fuck? He got hurt swinging the bat? That's really fucked up. But I would consider bringing him back. What about Chapman? Oh, Chapman's done. He's walking. He's yeah, done. He's walking. We're sure. done with Chapman. He's gone. Who other guys are in contract years? Donaldson's. Uh, oh, Donaldson, yeah. you don't like eat him? that. Oh, he's washed up. Yeah, he's done. A lot yeah. of Yankee fans were complaining that they didn't have Bryce Harper for the two million. I wanted Bryce more. Harper. I wanted him. He was perfect for the Yankees. Lefty. He's a guy that can play. Fits the, the New York attitude. He fits it. He's, he can play on a big yeah. stage. He's gonna win a World Series. You think so? Oh yes, the Phillies are gonna fucking beat them. I know the I know the Astros are good, but they took advantage of a weak team. The Yankees could have won two games. Should have won game one. Should have won game four. I could I could bring up specific instances where, you know, Boone fucked up. Very, yeah. and everybody knows, you know. Gets Clark Schmidt first game, gets double play. Never should come out. It's 1-1. One, one. That first game is huge. He was treating it like it was a, a throwaway game. No, it's not a throwaway game. You got to win that game. Especially in Houston. Yes, and then even the other night, they fucking, uh, Cortez didn't have it. You're out. Yeah. Fucking, I, there's a video of Lasorda pulling a guy in the first inning again in 77. He, the guy's on the mound. He goes, hey, Tommy, man, I feel good. I don't give a fuck if you feel good. You're Bring up that video. Because I don't give a fuck. He cursed like 55 times. Goes, I can't leave him in this fucking game. He just gave him three fucking hits. He goes, he goes well, they were in the opposite field. Goes, I don't give a fuck they were in the opposite field. Because I can't have you in a game like this. Yep. <laughs> I'm the manager. Well, we, I, right you away. need a manager like that, though. Yeah. You need a guy. Right, who's, who's your manager of the New York Yankees next year? Oh. A lot of people are saying Donnie baseball. They want Don Mattingly. They want him. They want him. Unfortunately, I love Donnie. He's going to be another boon, though. I think so? People pleaser. And then when the times get rough, it doesn't make the right call. Somebody, I saw somewhere, they like, Don Mattingly's a winner. He knows. Give us give us. I was like, but hold on. He never won a World Series. He never won. He never won. He killed it all those years. The year he retired, they won the next year. I know. So we love Donnie, but he doesn't have... I don't see even it. as a coach, he uh, he they never won with him. Even as a coach, maybe as a bench coach, you know, <laughs> like first base. He's, like, not, he's not gonna demote himself though. <laughs> no, nah, it's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> but who's your guy then? Give us Buck, no? Jeter? Oh, no, Buck is. Nah, G- no, we'll take Buck gonna, though. G's not. Gonna go too to Hollywood for that. No, G's not nah. gonna go in the dugout. You can't get a first people favorite. Yeah. You got. You know be who would be good? Ooh. And he's a friend of mine, but they'll never hire him because they they don't like him. Is a Rod? You know. I don't you think, think so like as it. a coach. You think A-Rod as a coach? That's an I never heard anybody say that. Tony, he'd be a good like bench coach. He's oh, a great. Okay, okay. He's a great. His baseball IQ is off the wall. Yeah, yeah. And we're friends. He's he good. knows how to dissect. A-Rod's the game. a good dude. I, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people hate on A-Rod. We, hey, listen, we wouldn't have won 09 no, without I love, him. I love A-Rod. I love him. I still love A-Rod. You no, know, he made some mistakes. He's they did a, him dirty at the end, huh? 
The Yankees he, did him dirty at the end. They did because you know the you know the steroid listen, shit and all. Yeah, that. Yeah, but wish. he's you know he's kind of restored you know a lot of people that like him. He, either you know you hate him or you love him, like with Alex. But he's actually a nice guy, man. Yeah, yeah. You he know, seems I was, like a I was on nice the Fox guy. broadcast with them live in 2019. Big pop. It's hysterical. If you guys ever yeah, Google that. Great. It's fucking hilarious. A Rod's hugging me because they're like, Poppy's like, Did you have a boom? Did you have a boom? I did it live. I fucking knocked it out of the park. <laughs> they never give me these jobs because they're like afraid of me. I don't know. MLB, they're like, they, Maybe I'm too wild for them because, you know, baseball is too conservative. Very. And I'm wild. They so need like, that, though. But they boring need as a guy. Like it's, a, it's a boring My son goes, If you is. were a football fan, you'd have a job. Even my brother goes, They should hire you because you know what you're talking about and you're passionate. So it's like anybody that gets me, like Rich Eisen has me on a lot, and uh, I, you know, I, I love the game. I'm not out there to right. kill anybody. Let's get rid of the shift and let's get Nick to The <laughs> Shift is gone next year. Thank yeah. God. Thank God. Thank God. And also, if you and we need more pitching and a shortstop. If you throw the first, like uh, three or two times. Two. T- if you throw the Pick first off. three, times. I don't like yeah. this putting a time limit on the pitcher. That's not baseball. Yeah, that's not baseball. That's not it's baseball. Pick off. I agree with like. Throwing a pick off three, four times is crazy. Yeah, it's a little annoying. It slows the game down because they do. You do need to and make the it strike a zone's fucking bad. You know what? You got challenges. I think you should have a, one or two challenges on a fucking a strike. critical strike. What about instead of an umpire, you actually go by the machine? Nah, I don't think. Nah, so. I don't like that. You don't like that. It either? ruins the integrity of the game. You gotta have. But a there's hu- so many 50-50 You gotta balls. have a human yeah. element. You know, then you can't even argue more. They took all the arguments out of the game. That was that, that was great. I just saw an argument with Tory. <laughs> When he was a manager, you guys got to watch this fucking thing. In the 70s on the Braves, he comes running out as when Tory was young. And he's like, you motherfuckers, cocksuckers, kowtow, that those fucking Dodgers. He goes, what the fuck are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Tory's fucking cursing up a storm. He still didn't get tossed. It was good. You should allow that in the game. It's exciting. It was right? exciting. See, see them go back and And you forth. see him fucking curse. The Italian in him came out. Because Italians can curse. Yeah, a little bit. There's cursing and this cur- Italians don't like, no, like my dad right. is a professional. He's a genius at cursing. Nick, who are good. the greatest five Yankees of all time? My, my you're, greatest? You're, you're Nick Tutorial's best five Yankees of all time. My five Yankees of all time. Munson, catching. Okay. Jeta, shortstop. Um, I'm going to go Reggie in right field. Mm-hmm. Bernie Williams in center. And... Um, should I put a pitcher in there? Yeah. You got a lot of them. Huh? You got a lot of them. A lot to choose from. I'll put Mariano in there. Yeah, Mariano's yeah. go. Sandman, baby. Yeah. No one better than him. Yeah, so I'd, I'd combine the 90s and the 70s guys. Yeah. 70s is still my favorite team. Yeah. That's my childhood. Mm-hmm. That's my childhood. You know, I something about those 70s. And I'm a 70s boy, but I do like that 90s team too. The very blue. Co- I love Paul O'Neill too. Yeah, he, he was, was class. I think he was the... He's kind of the unsung hero. He's the guy that had like the edge, the balls. When they made that trade for him in 93, things started to change. They had guys coming up. It was a great trade for Roberto Kelly, and they stole him. And O'Neal was just perfect for the Yankees. Like Rizzo. He's per- Rizzo could have played on that team. I Rizzo, Rizzo looks like a Yankee. He yeah. looks like a Yankee. He feels Clean like a Yankee. Kid. He was a Cub. They got Italian. Bring- He's Italian. He's Italian. Yeah. Italian. Yeah, I know. And I like Anthony. You know what I mean? And it's good having a Paisan. That's Playing for New York. I love yeah, that, too. Ben, ben Attendi. He's yeah. Italian, too. Another yeah. fucking Italian name. Uh, Nemo for the... Ma- I like having Is players... Nemo, I like that they're in the New York. And yeah. Volpe. Yeah. Volpe and... Yeah, Anthony, we'll just talk about Volpe. Let's, let's give this kid a chance. Yeah. We gotta He's got to play, right? He's got to play. This is the year, I think. This Rogers. is the year. Enough is enough. Yeah. Uh, so, Nick, this is the first time we've ever done this. We've been waiting for this one for you. Yeah, especially. this one's safe for you. So, you know how we do the overrated, underrated, perfect lady skits? Have you seen that on TikTok? All right, so... Overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated, you're going to say what these New York teams are, in your opinion, right now. Oh, right now? Right mm-hmm. now. So Overrated, underrated, underrated or perfectly or rated. Perfect. Overrated means it's hyped up. Right. You know. underrated, underrated means, means they should get more love. Right. Perfectly rated, like 50-50. Uh-huh. Right. All right? Right. All right, so we'll start with the New York Yankees. Overrated. Whoa. I wasn't expecting that. As a Yankee that. fan, overrated. As a Yankee fan, they're overrated. They're overrated. Yeah. Why? Because everybody thinks they're so fucking great. And they haven't won dick in, in years. <laughs> okay. I'll say the Yankees... They're good, but they're not as good as people yeah. have built them oh, up. Nine I'll the say the Yankees nine. are perfectly rated because even though they aren't winning every year, like Yankee fans are spoiled to having, you know, like 27 rings, we're the best. Yeah, but they say they're a great team. They're not a great team. The Yankees are... They're they won, a, lot, they won a lot of baseball games. They have. They... 
The reason, sexy. the reason why you I'm saying. You know what they're like? They're like a hot chick that gets you horny and they leave you fucking hanging. <laughs> That's what they are. They hit home runs. They're as sexy as. Uh, you're breathing like hard for a girl. And then she walks away. Uh, I'm going to say perfectly rated because when you think of New York, you see a Yankee hat. Of Maybe course. they don't win every year. It doesn't matter. That That's why hat. it's perfectly rated. Marketable. <laughs> That's why it's perfectly rated. Yeah, but in my heart of hearts, I know they're not as good as people think they are. Yeah. I see- know they're not as good. That's why I'm nervous about them every postseason. I've not felt one postseason that we're this is our year. We're gonna Never. win. We're gonna fucking win it. He's a real fan. This yeah, guy. man. He's a realist. I like that. Uh, next up, we got the New York Mets. The Mets. I Be would careful s- with this one. All right. Yeah. I would say the Mets are they're a little underrated. A little underrated, not too much. Though. Not too much. It's pretty close. I would say the Mets would be like underrated, but we suck ass. I we think- always disappoint. Like any way we could choke, we choke. So I would say perfectly rated because everybody knows the Mets are gonna fuck up. Like you just know Mets are gonna Mets. I don't feel that way, but I feel like the Mets. You and know, we have a new owner now, and I have faith in him. The Mets had a good team this year. Just some things at the end went wrong for them. I mean, we didn't make any like big acquisition. At, the like, guy uh, Sterling got hurt. The Gr- got the hurt. Grom Monte uh, that hurt them. Monte they got, they got uh, swept by the Cubs. Wasn't that like a huge and, series? Yeah. Yeah, and then fucking the, and the lost Braves all these... were so hot. Yeah. yeah, and Scherzer, who was dynamite, is old, and he showed his fucking old age. And then they didn't have a full full the Grom. Yeah. So. The Mets, I mean, in a lot of ways, I thought they had a better team than the Yankees this year. I thought they had a better yeah. team, they had a better manager. Not hitting wise. I but mean, they're still the Mets, and they got that stench of being the Mets. So I'll tell you guys one you thing. Know. You guys aren't going to like this. But if we get Aaron Judge and just plug That's him. That's not going to happen. You know why? <laughs> if we just plug him in no, our no, lineup, no, it's not gonna we happen. win the World Series. First of all, we don't take the Mets, and the Mets don't usually. This is kind of weird. Like The Yankees are not going to take their closer. We don't do that. There's some Mets that became Yankees later on, but there's a, there's a there's a something like between them that I don't. That's not good. It's not good that we take their best players. I just say, or they take if on. you put Aaron Judge in right, you know how hated he would be. Mar- of course, but do that. Cohen got the scuttles for him. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? but I don't, I don't think know. it's gonna happen. He's know. got he's got he's paying. He's got other things he's got to think about. Listen, Aaron Judge, fifty million a year, four years. <laughs> He's not going to take come, come to the match. He's, He's not going to do it. It's kind of an absurd thing to think about. And um, like just, they're really upset. I don't that. see it. No, I just... He you can't look, try to take away. Imagine, he would look ridiculous. He's, right, He's going to look like a genius. He would look podcast. ridiculous. He would look ridiculous. He would be hated. Uh, forget it. It would be a nightmare. If I were judge, I wouldn't do it. And if I was but judge, I'm with you him. Go, you go to the West Coast then? I would rather go West yeah. Coast. No, if you're going to... Yeah, he would look weird as a giant. He only looks right in the pinstripes. For us, yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> a little biased, though. I already know. He would look ridiculous. I hope he sees this, and this is your pitch. Please stay. I would just tell him, at the end of the day, you will look absurd in a giant uniform. You're right, though. Strawberry left the Mets. He looked weird as a Dodger. He said, I never should have left the Mets. Yeah. yeah. I love Strawberry. I'm not yeah. a Mets fan, but I love them. Yeah. Sure. All right, let's move on to the next move one. Move on. The New York Knicks. The New York Knicks... Or kind of perfectly rated. Because they're like, you know, they, they they have a future, but they have a bad, bad owner, and they haven't won in a thousand years. Yeah. But they are coming up. Literally a thousand. They are coming up. Their Listen, owner is bad. I'm, I'm going to say it very simply. Yeah. I will give up my left testicle for a New York championship. <laughs> a New I York would, Knicks championship. I would love to see. The, that would be the best thing in the world for basketball. It's the greatest arena in the world. Even though they suck, it sells out. Everybody comes to the garden. There's no matter no, what. They could win seven games. If the Knicks could get good, the garden thrills me. Like, that gives me a high. Not as much as the Yankees, but this gives me a high way more than football. And there's something about that building, the Knicks. If they're good and they're really good, boy, my my brother John's a big Knicks fan. And now he would be very happy. And so would I. Because I go back to when I was a kid, Willis Reed. I remember them in the 70s. And they were beautiful. Even the Ewing years were fun. It hasn't been fun. But the garden is a magical... There's Mm -hmm. nothing like the garden. Nothing. So uh, I, I hope and pray. I mean, look at the football teams. They're doing good right now. Let's see. Hopefully it's not yeah. a mirage. But um, I do see. like this Knicks team because we got a bunch of homegrown talent. Yeah, yeah. Which we haven't had since you. You don't have a big star yet. 
That's the problem. I mean, you we don't mean have like that star. one bona fide right. star, but we have like five, six guys that could play basketball. Play. Are they a playoff team? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're should, number five seed. We're number four. It's a five disappointment seed. if they're oh, good, not. Good, good. So like Brunson, yeah. he, look, he makes he's, the team he's, so much better. Yeah, he makes the team a lot better. Brunson's Gives them some easy buckets. Right. Um, before the game, he was working out with his dad. I like to see that. You know, there's something special about this team. So hopefully uh, we make the playoffs and we could eventually get that, that bona fide guy. I hope so. Uh, next. next up, the other team, the other yeah, basketball team, gonna say, Brooklyn oh, Nets. Nets. Oh, I, they're like overrated. Man. Yeah, they're overrated. They're, they're like, Kyrie they're like a guy? fake team. Yeah. No, they're like a fake team. Like you know, they bought KD, bought Kyrie. They should go back to Jersey. I think. Fucking, they're weird. They're like they didn't belong in Jersey. They belong in Long Island. I grew up near Long Island. They were the ABA. They were the Nets. I saw them with a fucking. Dr. J with an I afro. I think so too. The Nets are a Long Island team like the Islanders. They should go to the UBS also. They honestly. needed to go back to Long Island. They don't belong in Brooklyn. They look weird. The Brooklyn Bro. Nets, it's weird. You know what's crazy, Nick? Jersey with that swamp, they were even worse. It was weird. <laughs> They're the- Telling you, they need to be sent back to Long Island. Why do you think the Long Island, uh, the Islanders went back to Long Island? They know. They know. They belong they know. there. They can be it's like Islanders the Jets. The Jets don't belong in Jersey. They should be playing in Queens. Fucking weird. Yeah. The Giants I understood. Yeah. The Giants were in the Bronx and they went over to, to the swamps. It's fine. The Giants belong in Jersey. The Jets do not belong. The Jets belong in fucking Long Island. They shouldn't be New York, New York Jets if they play in Jersey. Bring them home. I know. It's, it's so bullshit. stupid. Yeah. It's they, bullshit. You got no identity sharing a stadium. It's, it's terrible. You need your own fucking stadium. That's stupid. Every Jet fan should scream about that. City Field. Ah! Yeah, there you go. Uh, That's Gabe's team. Gang green, man. Gang green. Right. Speaking of which, yeah, the, New York Jets. The Jets, I think, are... Uh, I, I think the Jets are like a surprise team. I think they're a surprise team. So yeah, but I, we're like the worst franchise in all sports. But it's... it's it. Yeah, but I think it's... It, it, the Jets are going to catch a break here. This I is, hope so. Playoffs? Yeah. They've playoffs? suffered. Yeah, I think they're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. What about so, the Giants? The 6-1? and one. They know how to win. Both teams, know, I, I think they're both going to be in the playoffs. I think both these teams this year, it's going to be it's going to be some fun for the New York football fans, I, I finally. Think, I think it's a little overrated right now, though. Yeah, oh, the Giants? The Giants. I yeah, the Giants I think the Giants overrated. are a little overrated. I mean, they're playing I think great the Jets football, are but... a little underrated. Yeah, I would say the Giants, they're winning, but they're winning like by a hair. <laughs> So, by one yard, they by, 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 by a ten yard. I was listening on the radio. Hat. One yard against them. So I say the Giants are a little overrated, and the Jets are a little underrated. Listen, Nick. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for doing this podcast. My pleasure. Make sure to check out Nick on all social platforms. We'll put it in our bio. Sure. Till next time, my brother. That's it, man.